Math 31, welcome to our last example. We're going to solve an absolute value equation. And we've done this before. We did it in section 2.6, but we're going to do it through a different lens, through a different application. This time we're going to find x-intercepts. So for the function f of x being 2 absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3, find the x-intercepts if they exist and the y-intercept. Now if you remember from back in chapter 2, Anytime you want to find an x-intercept, you let y equal 0 and solve for x. If you ever want to find a y-intercept, you would let x equal 0 and solve for y. Okay, so I always remembered it as I let the opposite letter 0 out. So if I wanted to find an x-intercept, let y 0 out. If I wanted to find a y-intercept, let x is 0 out. And typically, it's easier to find the y-intercept than it is to find the x-intercepts. So we're going to do this by hand, okay? And then I want to flip over to my calculator and show you just a couple of tricks on the calculator to, to help you expedite your work or just to check your answer. Okay, so let's try this. The first thing I want to do is find the x-intercepts. All right, so let me put a little separation squiggles. Okay. Actually, I'm probably going to need more room for my x-intercepts than my y-intercepts. So I'll just, I'll start with x-intercepts and we'll see how much room I have. Okay, so for my x-intercepts, I'm going to let y equal 0. Or in this case, I'm going to let f of x equal 0. So I'm going to zero out my function here, right? I'm going to let y equal 0, or in this case, f of x. So I have 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. All right, if you remember from our techniques in section 2.6, whenever you want to solve an absolute value equation, you need to isolate the absolute value term first. And right now, this absolute value term is not isolated. I have a 2 and a minus 3 out here, so I need to isolate this. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides and get that 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 3. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So when I wind up isolating my absolute value expression, I'm left with absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 3 halves. And then the technique for solving this, this is that case 1 we had talked about at the beginning of this section, and that you also see in two point, sections 2.6 and sections 2.7. All right, I'm going to let x minus 1 be equal to 3 halves, or you can let x minus 1 be equal to negative 3 halves. So at this point, I'm going to get x equaling 5 halves, or x will be equal to negative 1 half. Great. Now I'm going to scooch this up just so we can practice the notation, because I do want to be clear about this. Let me get this as much into view as I can. All right, if I want to write up the x-intercepts correctly, now, x-intercepts are points on a graph, so you, you owe me an ordered pair the same way you owe me an ordered pair when I'm talking about maximum and minimum points. So my x-intercepts are actually 5 halves, comma, 0, and I also have negative 1 half, comma, 0. So I have two x-intercepts coming out of this problem, and, and we'll check them on our calculator and see, see them on the graph in just a moment. All right, let's go find the y-intercept. All right, so my y-intercept, whenever you want to find a y-intercept, you're going to let x equal 0. And like I said, finding the y-intercepts, they're typically much easier than finding the x-intercepts. So here, I'm going to plug 0 in for x. So f of 0 will equal 2 times the absolute value of 0 minus 1. And 0 minus 1 is negative 1, right? The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so we have 2 times 1 minus 3. And when we start to simplify that, we're going to get negative 1. But keep in mind, the y-intercept, just like the x-intercept, is a point on the graph. Whenever we're talking about a point on a graph, you owe me an x and a y-coordinate. So I'm going to be looking for 0, negative 1. All right, so we're going to keep those, two po those three points in mind. I'm going to flip over to the calculator, and I want to show you how your calculator can assist you in finding the x-intercepts, 
and how it can assist you in finding the y-intercepts. And it's two different techniques on your calculator, so we're gonna go over them, all right? Now, once we finish up with the calculator, we'll be done with this section. And keep in mind, in this section, we were graphing absolute value functions, which I'm hoping we're, we're comfortable with now, and solving absolute value equations, really through the lens of finding x-intercepts. Okay, so I'm gonna flip to my calculator and we're, we're gonna see how our calculator can help us with this. I'll see you in a bit, bye. In round 31, before we get out of this section, I just wanna show you options you have on your calculator to help you find all the x-intercepts and y-intercepts should you want. I'm still gonna to wanna to see the work, the algebra by hand, but it's great to know how your calculator can help you. So what we gotta do, ooh, looks like I had some fun in here. Let me clear out what I had and let's go put our function in. So we've got two absolute values, x minus one. Oop, is it coming? No, nope, let's hit enter. There we go, x minus one, um, minus three, all right, and I'm gonna hit zoom six. I don't know what window I had before. So there's my, my function. Now, just taking a look, I want you to see this graph, does it match what we found by hand? So I should have, if we see an x-intercept around two and a half, and let's look at our function. If I go one, two, maybe that's hitting at two and a half. That looks pretty good. It also says I should have an x-intercept at negative one half, and it does look like it crosses the x-axis right about at negative one half. I also have a y-intercept at zero, negative one, and it's a little hard to see, but I could be crossing the x-axis at negative one. Since it's so scrunched in there, I'm gonna actually adjust my window. Let me switch this to negative five, five instead of negative 10, 10, because I just wanna zoom in a little bit. Now, whenever I adjust my window, I need to hit graph, uh, and that looks a lot better to me. Like, that looks like negative one half, that looks like positive five halves. And if that drag screen gets out of the way, that does look like zero, negative one. So, so far, my algebra is looking like it matches my graph. And that's all fine and good for it looks like it, but let's check it. I'm gonna clear out all of this just so we can see the calculator commands. All right, I'm gonna start with the y-intercept because that's the easier of the two. So let me show you how you can calculate a y-intercept. Let's go second and trace. All right, now we've been here before, we talked about how to calculate maximum values and minimum values, but right now I'm just gonna calculate any old regular value. So instead of hitting three or four for the max or min, let's just hit option one. So you can either hit the number one or you can hit enter, and it'll prompt you. It'll say, hey, what X value would you like for me to calculate the Y value? So I would like it for x equaling zero because that's always the y-intercept, right? So anytime I wanna find an, a y-intercept, if I let x equal zero, now I hit enter, you can see my ordered pair of zero, negative one, okay? So let me just do, run through that again so you can see it, all right? I'm gonna hit second, trace. I'd like to calculate a value, all right? What x value am I curious about? x equals zero, hit enter, there we go. All right, so that's a great way to calculate values. And it doesn't have to be x equals zero. Let's say you were dying to know the x value, I don't know, at like four. It'll tell you, hey, it's up here at three. And you could plug four in, right? Four minus one is three, two times three is six, six minus three is three. You could get there on your own, but your calculator can do it for you. And especially when we get to the more complicated functions, it's kind of nice. All right, now the x-intercepts, they're always a little trickier. They're trickier by hand and they're trickier on your calculator. So what you have to do is you have to look at where your graph is crossing the x-axis. And I see it crosses at this point and this point. And it, so for this particular example, I have two x-intercepts. And your calculator is more than happy to find both of them, but it can only do one at a time. So what we're gonna do, let me clear my clear print. Let me clear my key press history. We're gonna hit second and trace, and we're gonna calculate a zero. All right, so zero, at least the way that Texas Instruments, the TI-84 folks programmed your calculators, that's like saying x-intercept. So now I'm gonna either scroll down to two and hit enter, or you can just hit the number two. And here's what your calculator needs. It needs a left bound, a right bound, and a guess. It's exactly like we did for the maxes and mins. Now I'm gonna go find this one over here. And if I were looking at this, I would probably guess this was negative one half, 
if I hadn't done the algebra ahead of time. So what is an x value to the left of negative 1 half? Well, negative 1 is to the left of it. So let me enter negative 1 in for my left bound and hit enter. You see my little triangle pop up. All right, what is an x value that is to the right of your 0? And again, if I think my x coordinate here is negative 1 half, well, 0 is to the right of it. You could also choose 1. That's to the right of it. You could choose 2. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to go past this other 0. Otherwise, it'll confuse your calculator. So I'm just going to enter 0. All right, and then you can hit enter through guess. And you see your calculator saying, hey, it was at negative 0.5 which is the fraction negative one half, so I've verified that zero. All right, so let me run through that again. Right? I can hit second trace, option two, and I'm gonna just choose different numbers so you can see the variety. I need a number to the left of my x-intercept, so I'm gonna pick negative two this time. I need a number to the right of my x-intercept, so I'll go with one. And you can see my calculator saying, I'm gonna find the x-intercept between these two triangles, right? between this part of the function, it's going to get me that value or that, that x-intercept at negative 1 half comma 0. And you can also, if you don't like this whole guessing a number to the left, guessing a number to the right, if you remember from before, you can move your cursor. I can move it to the left of my 0, hit enter, and then scooch it over to the right of my 0 and hit enter, and hit enter through guess. All right, let's go find the other one. The other one that I'm algebraically, we got at 5 halves. So I'm going to hit second trace. I'm going to do option two. Now I'll use blinky. I call the little flashing thing blinky. It's my technical term. I'm using blinky. Blinksters. Okay. So that blinky is to the left of my zero. So I'm going to hit enter. And then we move to the right of my x-intercept or my zero and hit enter. And then hit enter through guess. And you see it getting confirmed, right? 2.5 comma 0, which is 5 halves. Um, and if I wanted to, again, I can plug in numbers. I typically plug numbers in because I'm lazy and hitting the right arrow key and the left arrow key takes a while. So I would have guessed this was 2.5. I think 1 is to the left, 4 is to the right. So I'll do 1, enter, 4, enter, and then I'll hit enter again through guess, and I'm getting 2.5. All right, so that's how we find x-intercepts and y-intercepts on our calculator. We're really starting to use that calc menu. So we've calculated values, zeros, maxes, mins. We will eventually use the intersect option. You won't use 6 and 7 in this class. Those are calculus terms. But you have calculus um, options if you, you hold on to this calculator and you're moving on in math. Okay, so with that, that's the end of section 3.6. Thanks so much for hanging with me. I'll see you in a few. Bye.